Hey, the Egger community. Welcome to February's content batching party. If we haven't met before, my name is Megan and I do the outreach and onboarding here. And it is a delight to see you. Violet, thanks so much for kicking off the chat over there. As you guys can see, there's a chat box and we love connecting small business owners and solopreneurs during these. So go ahead and let us know who is here. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from or what industry you're in. And if you see someone you like to connect with, feel free to share your handles. It is all about creating creating community here. As you can see, Tia there is here from Team Edgar also, and she'll be monitoring the chat while I go over some of the slides as well as some of the product questions. So if you have questions that don't get answered, I will leave a little bit of time at the end to try to go through them. So just ask it again at the end if uh, the chat gets moving too quickly. But how this is gonna work is I'm gonna go over the concept of batching. We'll do a little bit of strategy and talk about kind of really effective ways to post on social media. And then I'll do a little product demo because I did notice that we have a lot of new people here today. So we'll go over how to use these strategies in the software of me, Edgar, at the end. So we'll go ahead and get going. Um, oh my gosh, Leslie from London, welcome. <laughs> this is so exciting. I love getting to see people from all over. If you are new to the concept of batching, the reason that we do these concept, uh, content batching parties is to make sure you have a strategy behind the content you're sending out on social media. And it doesn't become something that you're spending every single day creating status updates and posting. That is not a good use of your time. So if you've never done batching math before, I'm gonna pop a worksheet into the chat there that you can download. And this will help kind of structure ways that you can create categories and know exactly Exactly how much content you need to create for each category each month. Edgar is a category-based system of posting, and we'd love for you to try the software out. If you're not an Edgar user yet, you do get seven days free. But if you don't use software, you can still categorize your status updates to really make sure that this math works for you. The categories and the math that are on that worksheet should be customized to what works best for you, though. So go ahead and look at that. And the concept of batching, I always recommend doing monthly because that means you only have to create status updates for social media 12 times a year. But if you're someone who prefers to batch weekly, go ahead and use that as your strategy. Whatever you do, batching or content means blocking out an hour and two on your schedule every month or every week to do all of your social media at one time put it into me, Edgar, to schedule it out, and then you're good to go so you can focus on other areas of your business that are gonna drive more revenue and profit and really make a big, bigger difference than social media posting every single day. So let's pop into this, some slides here. Um, and, oops, that's not what I wanted. And um, go over a couple more strategies. All right. Ooh, Ireland. Welcome, Amanda. Super exciting. Yolanda from North Carolina. I went to college at, in North Carolina. Super exciting to have you all here. Um, cool. Here you go. So what is the secret to writing effective social media status updates? Well, it is to start writing like a person who is writing about a business, not writing like a business writing about a business. I know this is a subtle change, but when you're constructing your status updates, the things that work best to connect with your followers are those things that would normally show up in their feed. They are on social media typically to connect with friends and family. So the more that your business can sound like a friend or family actually chatting with someone, the more likely it is people will stop their scroll and not see your post as just an advertisement. People don't want to be sold to when they're on social media, but of course it's an incredible free platform for you to get your message out there. So the subtle difference here is to reread every status update that you go ahead and put out there and make sure it sounds like you're just speaking to a friend who perhaps asked you about your product or service. Don't use jargon. Don't make it hard for people to understand what's going on. Write as if you were talking to your best friend and write like a person talking about your business not in just business language itself. So having your brand voice in mind can be really helpful to help make sure that this is something you are staying strongly rooted to. I always recommend writing down three words that you want to establish as your brand voice. Like here at Me Edgar, we wanna be knowledgeable, we are a little bit cheeky and sarcastic, and we wanna be inspirational. So that brand voice needs to show up in every status update. And if I batch my content and do it all at once, it's much easier for me to get in that mind frame and be like, okay, I'm writing a status update. These three things need to be involved in it. That's how you get a consistent brand voice. 
Please don't overcomplicate what brand voice is. I know it can be kind of one of those jargony words to hear, but that's all it is. It's deciding on those three values and those three things that you want your brand to show up as when someone reads your status update. So go ahead and make sure you have those three words in mind. If you're having trouble with it, you can kind of flip it around and it can become easier also to establish the three words you do not want your brand to be known as. And that can really help clarify your brand voice as well. As you're going along and we're doing that batching math, if you downloaded the worksheet, you'll notice that I like to go ahead and establish the amount of posts you're going to create each month. So the example on that worksheet is, let's say you'd like to post six status updates a day for five days a week. If you're using six categories, breaking that down, that means you need to create 20 status updates per category per month to get new status updates going out. That sounds a lot more doable than saying I have to create 120 status updates for a whole month, right? That's why the categories make things structured so that you can really sit down during your batching days and know exactly what you're writing for each one. But these categories are not just a blanket for everyone to do the exact same ones. They need to work for your business. So when you are establishing your categories, the type of content, the buckets of content you want to send out, think about as if you were at a mixer or a networking event in real life. If you are thinking about a mixer, mixer and at a networking event in real life, I would really encourage you to go ahead and think about what you would tell someone when you weren't actually trying to sell them, right? You would position yourself as an expert and tell them about your knowledge. You would give them tips. You would go ahead and tell them your thought leadership. All of this stuff is giving you that authority and credibility that really goes into the fact this authority and credibility equals trust and trust is what selling online is. So you wanna think for ways to really make sure that you're establishing your categories so you're not sounding like you're selling, but you're really establishing trust that you are the expert and go-to person in your industry, that trust does the selling for you. So those are kind of the things you wanna think about when it comes to categories. Um, all right, uh, looks like, okay, Tia's got that question for the end. I will get back to that. It looks like it is a Edgar-related question, okay. So consistency truly is better than perfection on social media. I wanted to bring this up before we go into posting ideas because it truly does matter that you consistently post something daily rather than thinking you have to have the perfect post to go out. If you can't think of something to post daily, that's what the categories are there to guide you for. You wanna stick to the things you'll be known for and not feel like you have to construct the exact perfect status update every time it goes out. I find so often when I speak to people in things like office hours here at Meet Edgar or when I'm in the inbox, so much of the time people are like, I don't know what to say, so I don't say anything at all. That is the worst status update to put out there is nothing. So make sure that these categories are just being rotated through throughout the week, right? If you establish seven categories, you can just post one from each category a day. Keep it simple, keep it consistent, and you'll see your social media presence grow totally. All right. So if this post is something that you want to get out there on social media, I want to remind you that you have one ideal customer you're speaking to and every status update that's going out there should move this one ideal customer closer to being converted. How are you going to do this? Well, you're going to look at your status update and say, why am I posting this? So that we're not adding noise to social media because we know there is enough content out there already online that your content needs to be something that's speaking to that one person to move them from just becoming aware your product or service exists all the way down to deciding you are the person to buy from because they relate to you the most. So really keep that in mind. As I'm starting to talk about these categories and rotating through them, I don't want you to just be posting to have something every day. I know that's a little bit contradictive to what I said the first time, but as you create your categories, remember you have people who are in different phases, people who have purchased from you and people who are just becoming aware of your brand and your status updates in these categories should get a good mix of them to move people along that trajectory to actually converting and becoming a customer. How do you do this? Well, these are a four-step system that I think works really well for making sure your status updates have a reason behind them. First, 
you want to make sure you make the problem known. So make sure people know what problem you solve. For example, here at Me Edgar, we're a social media automation tool. The problem we solve is making sure that we are saving you eight hours a week on social media. The problem you have is that you feel like you're just throwing status updates out there when you have time and not actually thinking about how these status updates work into your marketing strategy. We want to talk about this problem on social media a lot so that you're well aware that we're aware of your problem. So what is the problem that you solve and make sure you have status updates and categories that make this well known. You really can speak about things in your status updates that amplify what happens if this problem is not solved. This is a good way to kind of itch under people's skin and be like, if you don't get a social media automation tool, you're going to continue to have to post on New Year's Day when everyone else is having fun, rather than plugging it into a social media automation tool so your feeds can be updated while you take the rest and relaxation you deserve. These kind of things that you can play out the benefits for that your features help are really helpful in your status updates. And sometimes you do have to agitate that problem and play it out to remind people what's going to happen if they don't solve this problem now. It can sound a little bit like salesy and sleazy when I say stuff like this, but I'd also love to remind you that helping people decide to do something and decide to buy something because it's going to save their problem is actually really valuable. You are doing someone a service if you know your product or service will help them in the future. I believe so wholeheartedly that social media automation tools like me, Edgar, will help your business. And if you do not sign up for one, you are going to continue to feel like social media is a waste of your time rather than seeing it as a structured system that is just a part of your workflow and is something that me, Edgar, takes care of so you don't have to log into five different social platforms because your time is better spent than, um, in other places in your business. So amplify that problem out. Then provide a solution. Me, Edgar, would be in this example. Next, you always want to have status updates that are going to prove your solution works. Now, if you don't have a lot of social testimonials that you can put out there, or if you're a new startup or a new brand, I'm going to remind you, you can speak to your own story about how you use your product or service as a testimonial. We remember stories way better than we remember just flat out status updates. If you really want to make sure that people feel comfortable pulling out their credit card and purchasing your product or service, you need to let them know other people have seen results. I promise you people love helping. There's people in this chat room right now who we have gotten amazing testimonials from about me, Edgar, that we use on social media that we've asked for because the people are helpful, right? You're a helpful person. I'm a helpful person. And sometimes as business owners, we get so afraid of just asking for those proof and asking for those testimonials. Um, but I'd really encourage you that as a part of this system of making the problem being known, amplifying out what's going to happen if you don't solve that problem, providing a solution, those testimonials are what's going to push people over a little bit. So ask people, tell stories about how other people have seen success. These status updates are golden. All right. So product market fit. When you are trying to get your product in front of the right person and move that person down your customer journey, as we've been speaking about, making their problem known and providing your solution, Remember, you're not trying to provide a solution to everyone because that's not going to make you well known and that's not going to make that word of mouth marketing and referrals that other people are trying to give you easy. You are trying to make your product fit with one person, one ideal audience persona. So we've gone over brand voice. You've got your three words of what you're going to write every status update through. You've established what problem your people have, how your product or service provides them that solution. And now you're really going to get in your mind that one person, give them a name, give them an age, give them a few personality traits and keep them in your mind as you're writing your status updates. Guys, I know this stuff sounds a little weird and you've probably heard it before, but ask yourself, have you actually taken these steps and actually tried it before? Because your status updates are going to resonate so much better if you follow this system going through here. Social media really is all about getting what you know, your thought leadership, your knowledge out in front of the person you can help most. If you don't know who that person you can help most is, it's hard to get that knowledge in front of them. So that's why these things are super important to lay that foundation and establish ahead of time. So really think about this simplicity, right? It's getting what you know out in front of someone and telling them how you can help. 
every single status update now seems a lot simpler, right? Just write down things you know about your industry, write down your experience, your successes and your failures. These are status updates. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated and you can add these things right on into your Meet Edgar categories. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the rule of thirds here. A lot of the time when I do content batching parties, I talk about the 80-20 rule just because that's such a good one and it's an easy one to explain in the fact that you want 80% of the content you put out there to be value adding content or entertaining content, 20% a little bit more promotional, and that can lead to a really good mix of content that keeps your feeds interesting. I wanted to give you a different thing today kind of similar lines here, um, but just take which one works best for you in your head when you're trying to establish how often you're sending out categories. The rule of thirds for how much content you're sending out says one third of the social content you're sending out each week should be promoting your business and converting leads into paying customers. So one third of that content should be sending people to a special discount or sending people to your pricing page or going out there and actually getting people to sign up for your lead magnet. These things that are really important in your business. I know we say value, value, value all the time on social media, but really we need to promote our businesses too. And one third of your content should be doing that. One third of your content should also be sharing thought leadership ideas that you have about your industry or that other people have about your industry. This helps remind people what you do. It helps remind people the concepts that you are an expert in and really keeps you top of mind. Curating content is a part of this. So other people's thoughts about the stuff in your industry is a really strong tactic to take because this really allows people who have maybe already purchased from you but are still interested in this thought leadership going on in your space and your niche They'll continue to follow you on social media because they know this person curates really awesome content that I'm really excited to learn about. So I'm going to keep following them so I don't have to go out and Google and stay up to date with my industry. I just have to follow their Twitter account, right? So you can see how that's a helpful thing to really make sure that you're positioning yourself as an expert. I promise you curated content. So going out there and Googling blogs in your industry, top names in your industry and sharing their thoughts. I promise you this sounds weird using your social channels to drive traffic to other people's site or cause brand awareness in that way, but it's such a good hack of getting more social status updates out there without having to do the work, right? So here at Me Edgar, we talk a lot about social media, but we're not huge experts on things like No story pins right now. However, we know that providing you with this information could be incredibly useful. So if we go out there and source things from trusted sources like social media examiner or social media today who are writing articles on this and educating people on this, and we put those on our feed, we're showing that we care about giving you the best social media industry knowledge, no matter where it came from. And it's a really good way to keep you interested in our feeds and really make sure that you remember me, Edgar, and social media um, without us having to do that extra work, right? So a few benefits there. The last third in the rule of thirds should be content for personal interaction. So engaging content. This can be as simple as going out and Googling some icebreaker questions. Inspirational quotes are incredibly engaging content on social media because people love to share that stuff. Really funny memes or something that you found really witty online, sharing that out is super engaging because people like to talk about that stuff. So if you follow this rule of thirds, it makes it easy when you're putting your categories on your Meet Edgar schedule to really see if you've got this down. Remember, there is no one right answer. Don't let your perfectionist get in the way of your consistency here. You can follow the 80-20 rule if that's easier for you to establish, but these kind of concepts make it easy to take the guesswork out so you don't have to decide what to post. You know you have that structure of these things that work really, really well. All right. So rule of thirds, again, can be also thought of as getting attention for your brand, converting that attention to a, uh, to a paying customer, and keeping that attention once they've actually purchased from you. So you see how I just explained the rule of thirds? And now I'm explaining the rule of thirds, basically what we just explained, but in different language. Getting attention, so converting leads, driving traffic to your site, stuff like that. Converting that attention, getting them discounts, making sure that they're actually going and paying for your product or service and keeping their attention after. You can think about your posts in those three ways as well. 
The reason that I want to do this one more time here, rule of thirds can also be thought of growing your audience, serving them regularly, and having a call to action in your posts. The reason I'm doing this three times here is because this is a concept called upcycling that we really recommend when you're batching your content. So upcycling means just taking one concept and thinking about different ways that you can really position it on social media. This is something that is important and sometimes we get a little afraid to do. Um, but again, to be known for something online, you have to speak about it multiple times. You can't just go off and speak about a bajillion different things. You have to cons you have to conserve what you're talking about into like three pillar categories so that you're known for that. A really easy way to do that is just reword things that you're trying to get out there. So this rule of thirds or this 80-20 rule, I could talk about in status updates, but I could use different language because you never know when it's going to hit someone, when they're ready to buy, or you never know what language is really going to click with someone. So don't be afraid to do things like this. If you're explaining a concept in your industry, think about how you can reword it or rephrase it and make three different status updates out of that. Me, Edgar, our software actually is a feature that I'll show you when we do the demo of variations that you can actually get different variations of the same status update on there just to reword it, make sure that you get that variety out there, but that you're sticking so close to that one main message. All right. Another thing I want you to remember is you want to think about if people are finding themselves in your post. Are you using language that they use in your status updates? This is incredibly important for resonating with your followers. And I want to look at an example here. Um, so this is Paper Bell. The founder of Me Edgar, Laura Roeder, actually just created this company, Paper Bell, which is a software for coaches. And we're going to go through some examples of what she's doing on her new Instagram feed here um, to really help simplify the process of social media and show you, you know, she is someone who invented a tool for social media and to really give you the idea of how she's rotating through categories to really position herself as an expert to give you this inspiration that you can do the same for yours. So this here is a post that she's really going to um, make sure is a get to know you post. I'm going to scroll through and get this text a little bit bigger so we can go over how this status update really puts her ideal audience persona front and center by using the language that they use to describe their problems so that when someone reads this, they say, yes, oh my gosh, yes, this is it. So it says, we often hold back from helping our clients because we don't want to appear pushy. That word pushy came from emails in came from product research and came from calls with her customers for why they feel scared to ask for that payment for their coaching services is because they don't want to seem pushy to their clients. So she's taking that language and putting it into their status update. So future clients, when they're reading this says, oh my gosh, she's in my head. I get it. Yes, that's my feeling too. This is what you want to do with your status updates. So really make sure that you go out there and talk to your customers, see what they're saying in different Facebook groups. If you go into Facebook groups where your ideal customer hangs out, you can see the language that they're using there and really put them into your status updates. Then she goes on to explain a little bit more about herself. And she even signs off with a really inspirational sign off here. Keep it simple, make it easy, make being in your world enjoy an enjoyable experience, make it fun. And she signs off. This is a great way to make sure that you're reminding people you are talking like a human about your business. So going back to that first concept we talked about at the beginning, she's really humanizing this post. It's a business post, but if she comes across much more as a friend and much more as someone that you're just telling your origin story, really making sure that you're coming off um, like you're talking to someone rather than just writing about your business, this is going to resonate so much more. I also wanted to show you the simple call to action that they have at the bottom of this post here. They say, if you'd like to learn more about Laura's journey as an entrepreneur, then check out some of her latest podcasts. Just Google Laura Roeder podcast. This is such a simple call to action, especially on Instagram where links aren't clickable. Think about creative ways that you can really put a call to action on your post to help people know the next step to take. When we construct a social media status update, we want to remember there's a next step after that that you want that person to take. And this is a really good one to try out on Instagram if you've never done it before, because so often we see people do things like link in bio. But how often do we actually go to someone's bio and click on the link in it? Not super often. So get creative with that call to action there. 
as you start to think about ways to upcycle content like this, this post is a really important post here um, that she could use as a concept of telling her origin story and really getting it out on social media in different ways. And there's three main things I want to remind you that you can change in a post that make it really easy. She could change this photo and still have the same um, caption. She could change the caption and still have the same photo. She could use both of the same, but have a different call to action at the end. And that is okay to do. Keeping it simple, rotating through those three main things to just change it up a little bit is a really great way not to overwhelm yourself, to stay true to your brand message, and to really make sure that you're creating social media status updates that don't overtake your business time. That is really keeping social media simple and straight to the point with your message. Social media really needs to be showing off your expert status, which means you need to talk about things in your industry. An example of how this is going to work is to really make sure you're remembering the algorithm is looking at what you're talking about to get it in front of the right people. So if you are going off and not sticking to your main pillar categories that you're creating to really talk about those same concepts over and over again, you're often confusing the algorithm and they don't know who's gonna like this content the best. So that's another reason that we really suggest keeping your categories simple, keeping your message simple so that it can go out. All right, so this is an example, again, by Paper Bell of just talking about things in your industry. She's not selling the tool at all, but this is really allowing her to be seen as an expert status for online social media or online coaching scheduling tools here. So what kind of tips can you give for your product or service that aren't necessarily selling your product or service, but are helping people really get to know that you are an expert in your industry. So she's showcasing that she knows all about the online platforms to help you get new clients. If you saw this post, you're not being sold to, but you get the brand awareness of saying, okay, Paperbell knows how to get me new coaching clients. I'm gonna remember Paperbell and coaching clients. These things really position yourself as an expert and it's not hard to do. As you start to move along, you wanna find ways to talk about your industry without talking about your product because people don't wanna be sold to, but it's a really great way to add value and still remind yourself that you're doing good for your business by raising that brand awareness. This is another really with the coaching industry. And she's adding this really valuable status update saying here are 12 life coaching books that you can read this year. This is a great thing for you to take for your industry. Are there blogs out there? Are there podcasts out there? Are there books out there that you could curate a list that you know your followers from their interests and what they have in your industry would enjoy reading? This is a great status update that anyone can adapt and actually use that is super valuable for your followers and valuable for your brand for raising that expert status that you are needing on social media for people to be confident to buy from you. Remember, trust, trust, trust is what is going to sell online and building trust means showing people that you know about things in your industry. A post like this can really help position yourself in that way. All right, so finding something you like on someone else's account and repurposing it for your brand. Why am I saying this? Because again, I think we overcomplicate it, especially small business owners who wanna help our clients so, so much. We overcomplicate social media so much thinking we have to be 100% original. There is a term out there that's called steal like an artist that so many creative people have really um, kind of latched onto in a way that they're saying the best art out there is finding the stuff that you like and putting your own spin on it. Don't overcomplicate it and feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. For example, this post here from Paper Bell is a really great inspirational quote saying, take what you need and then providing some things that, again, we uh, Laura knows her ideal audience persona would really relate to. This post here, you could take for your industry. We made it in Canva. Go on into Canva, recreate this. It's just four lines that you can add on there with your text and recreate those little status update ripaways with stuff that you know your audience would really relate to. 
If you see something on someone's social media that you could really tweak for your own, don't be afraid to use that as inspiration. You don't have to 100% recreate the things that are going out online. Look for things that are working well. Go to your competitors or go to other people in your industry and see what status updates are getting the most engagement and really try to see how you can put your brand spin on something like that. It is one of the easiest ways to strategize and make sure the content you're putting out there is stuff people want to see. All right, so another status update you really need to have when you're establishing your categories is the transformation your product or service provides to people out there. You wanna remind people before you bought their product or service, this is how you felt. After you bought the product or service, this is how you felt. That transformation is what people are looking for when we buy anything, right? It could even be like when you buy a book, What's the transformation you're looking for? You're looking for that before state of not knowing the knowledge in the book. You want that book to fill your curiosity and get that knowledge, right? So any product or service has a transformation that you're promising to your ideal client. And at least every couple of weeks, you really need to have a status update going out there that proves this transformation to really allow people to see, again, that you're offering a product or service that gets their desired outcome in life and brings them closer to it. So you want to think about content that can help people have a really positive experience in the first week of using your product or service. This can be a really helpful thing social media can provide. We think social media is just for bringing in leads, getting that brand awareness, stuff like that. But think about the people who have already purchased from you and are still following you. How can you use social media to do things like demo your product or service, give them tips on how to use it better? A really great example post of this from Paper Bell is just doing a screenshot of the inside and going ahead and letting people know what features are where. This is incredibly simple just to look at, incredibly screenshotable for you to save later on, and really helps make sure that A, you're showing new people who haven't purchased from you that transformation that this product software can offer, and B, it really allows you to help people who have already purchased from you know about the features and know how to use them properly once they do. So that's another really great category to create is product demos, stuff for people already using your product or service. This is incredibly helpful because I want you to remember, even if you send out like updates through email, allowing people to have like onboarding emails, which um, allow the, you to walk them through the setup process. Remember, not everyone opens every email they get, just like not everyone sees every status update you get. So this repurposing concept can be used incredibly well from those onboarding emails. You probably already have screenshots on. You probably already have copy written that helps welcome people into the product. Why not take that work you've already done, create a category in Meet Edgar, and really establish those emails as um, status updates as well. We don't see every status update. We don't open every email. So go ahead and share and repurpose and reuse that content so you can stay sane and not feel like you have to continue to create, create, create in order to have social media work to present your business to your followers. All right, so we talked about this a little bit, but I also want, before we go into the demo part here, for you to remember that going deep on a subject area, so going a mile deep, not a mile wide, really means going ahead and repeating the content you're putting out there, which I know makes people a little uncomfortable. So think about the ways that you can switch up the three key ingredients in a status update. The three key ingredients are the headline, the copy there, your photo creative, and your caption to that photo status update. If you can switch these things up, you can switch up the call to action. You can still talk about those same concepts over and over again and get a variety of posts going out there. So the reason that I really want to drill, drill this home of going through categories and talking about the same things is because when you talk about the same things over and over again, you're giving other people a way to talk about your product or service. If people come and they're not clear on what you do, if their friend is talking about, oh my gosh, I spend so much time on social media for my business, I really wanna have more time to help my kids with their homework at night. If your friend said that, and me, Edgar, didn't talk about over and over the time-saving benefits of a social media automation tool, 
you wouldn't have on top of your mind to tell your friend, oh my gosh, you should use this tool, me, Edgar. What is that for your business? If someone out there is complaining about something that your product or service solves, talk about it over and over again so that you're giving people the language and the reminder that when one of their friends needs it, they'll have a way of telling you about it. So use language that people can understand and really don't be afraid to repeat that. All right. So I'm going to go over and do a quick product demo of me, Edgar, because I know we have a lot of new people here. And then I'll jump back into some of these questions that I know Tia has been marking here. If you have used me, Edgar, before, I wanted to pop this slide up here real quick, because remember, these content batching parties are time and space that I do hope you all use to actually start to create status updates. Um, so these are ideas of what you can start to write in your status updates and start to really get into your um, content library. Now, remember, me, Edgar also does a virtual co-working hour every um, first Monday of the month. So keep an eye on your email if you're looking for a more quiet space just to actually write your status updates. That is what that's going to be great for. I don't blab during slides here. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but as we go into the product demo, if you already use Edgar and you don't want to do the demo here, take a look at these and actually start to batch out some of your status updates with the concepts that we've been chatting about. But I'm going to go ahead here and share my screen so we can do the product demo before I get to the rest of your questions. All right. So as you come on into me, Edgar, you're going to log on in. The first thing you're going to do, of course, is hook up the status update or hook up your social media accounts you'd like me, Edgar, to post to. And that's going to be under your accounts tab right here. So the accounts tab in me, Edgar, will allow you to connect your, um, your uh, social media accounts. And you can see we connect with Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Twitter. I always suggest if you have all of these accounts, go ahead and hook them up here so you can amplify the messages you're putting into our library out as many places as possible online. If you don't have all these accounts, please don't stress about it. One of the main things we like to get across here at Me Edgar is that you don't have to be on every social channel. You want to be on the social channel you know your ideal client already hangs out on. If you know your ideal client loves Instagram, don't try to pull them over to Twitter. That's a different network. You can still be on Twitter, but focus where your ideal client is. All right, so when you hook up your accounts, you're just gonna click on these little guys right over here to the left. It'll grab your username and password and hook it on up. Categories is the next thing we're gonna peek at here. So these categories are what we've been talking about the whole time to really make sure you're getting a good system. If you are using me, Edgar, you can rename a category by clicking on this pencil icon and name it to something that makes sense for your business. If you have the full Edgar plan, you can create as many categories as you want. If you have the light Edgar plan, you have four categories to work with here. So categories are just buckets of posts, pillars of posts, types of content you want to get out. Once you get your categories established, you're going to start to add your content to me, Edgar. So you can manually add status updates by clicking to add content here. You always assign where the status update can go. So over here to the left, this is giving Edgar permission to send the status update out here. If something over here is not checked, Edgar will never send it there. Next, you're going to tell Edgar what type of post this is, and then you're going to write your status update here. If you have like a URL or something in here, so let me go ahead, and you would like to see like what the it's going to look like once it's sent out, this little eyeball icon here will allow you to go ahead and see like what the Facebook preview will look like, stuff like that. Or if you prefer, you can always attach your own photo or video if you're not using a link with these little icons in the lower left corner. Once you're happy with it, you can save this status update to your library. The library in Edgar is just a catalog of all your posts. Everything you add to Edgar will always remain in the library, which is awesome because remember, we want to evergreen our content. We want to upcycle it so that more and more people can always see the status updates that you spent so long constructing perfectly for your ideal client. Um, a couple of other ways you can get status updates into Me Edgar's library is going to be on the import tab. The import tab will allow you to do things like upload a spreadsheet of content, um, connect things like a YouTube channel to automatically pull in or a podcast, or you can do things like connect your blog or curated blogs from other people's blogs in your industry. Um, so to do any of these, it's super simple. You just click on the box that you're looking to connect. I'm going to go ahead and just put in, let's say here, I wanted to share all of me Edgar's blog posts. I just put our URL in here and click on next. 
This will go ahead and say, great, there's an RSS feed connected here and ask me where I'd like the posts to go, what category in Edgar I want these posts to be put into. Then I can choose either to import these directly into my library or send them to a pending content queue. The difference here is when you add an RSS feed from a blog to Edgar, he's going to check it every 24 hours. If a new blog post has been released within that time frame, he'll automatically pull it in and create a status update out of it. So if it's your blog and you know that you're going to really love to send everything out, you could send it directly to your library and we'll look at how it gets scheduled next. If it's someone else's blog or you like the ability to edit your post first, you can send it to the pending queue. Now, the pending queue in Edgar is also in the library. It's going to be on the second tab here. And you can see what the RSS S feed actually brings in is the title as well as the URL. So if this is something you'd like to share out, you can just approve it. If you'd like to edit it to add in your own thought leadership or let your community know why you're sharing it, you can edit it first. Or you can decide to reject it if you don't think it would be really beneficial for your followers to see. So this tool, I think, is incredibly useful for you to add in like five or ten um, different things like podcasts, YouTube channels, blogs that you know your audience would love that are really respected in your industry. Send it to your pending content queue. Your curated content is taken care of. So all you need to do on your batching days is come on in and approve or edit the ones you want to share, reject the ones you don't want to share way faster than having to Google it every single time. All right. So that's how you're going to get status updates into your library. In your library, they're just going to remain here and not send out until you tell Edgar when. So there's two main ways of scheduling in Edgar. First is going to be from the schedule tab here. So this is for your evergreen content, and this uses the categories. So this one week view is set up in order to repeat over and over again. So you only have to set it up once. Super simple process. You're just going to come on in here and click to tell Edgar when you want a status update to send out. Similar to when you're adding content, you go ahead and check off where you want this to go. You tell Edgar what type of post this is, and you go ahead and click on save, and you can see that's a status update now. So the way these work with your library is a last in, first out rotation. So when Edgar comes upon this category, he's going into the library to that category and he's choosing the most recent post you added to that category and sending it out. He'll then take that post and put it to the end of the line in the category and move along. Next time he reaches this, he'll send the next update out, put it to the end of the line and move along. So he's working his way through all of the content you've added to that category. Once he reaches the bottom and there's no new content in that category, that's when I'll start from the top again, resurfacing content for new people to see or those who didn't have the opportunity to see it the first time. So as you're getting started, one of my favorite things to suggest to not get overwhelmed with the Edgar is to create your categories, make a batching goal to get at least 10 status updates into each category you create in the library. Then put each category onto your schedule twice. If you have 10 status updates in a category and it's on your schedule twice, that's five weeks worth of fresh content going out before Edgar starts repeating it. So that's a month worth of fresh content consistently going out to your followers, consistently providing them with that value. That frees up your time to then create more content, batch it into the categories every month, and as you start to load up your library more and more, you can always then use which categories people seem to be liking the most and add more time slots for them on the schedule and kind of go ahead and have that experimental mindset. So don't think you have to have your library perfectly set up to really get the most bang for your buck out of Edgar here. And this is really where you can start to see that rule of thirds or that 80-20 rule really easily. So if you're sending out one status update a day, which guys is an incredible thing to accomplish, even just sending out one status update a day is taking care of your business and getting it out online. Um, if you're doing that, rotate through four categories, rotate through seven categories, however many you have, and look to make sure you feel comfortable with that 80-20 rule. Now, as these evergreen consistent scheduled posts are going out in the last in first out rotation, the way you know where in that rotation you are will be in the Q tab. So the Q tab is going to go ahead and give you a two week view. It's live updating. So every day it'll show you the following two weeks. 
and it'll show you the date and what content you have going out. If you ever want to stop automation, you can always click pause queue. If you ever wanted to skip a post, you can click this fast forward button, which will send it to the end of the line in the category and pull in the next one. All right, so that is for your evergreen content. That's stuff that always makes sense to send out. That's really providing inspirational, educational content, um, sales content for your um, followers. If you have content you need to send on a specific day, you're gonna schedule that on the composer screen here. So when you're making a post to add to your library, same deal applies that you're checking off where it can go. You're writing the status update here. And then rather than saving it to your library, you've got a few options. First, under advanced settings here, you can always tell Edgar to mark a post as use once. If this use once is checked off, it does exactly what it sounds like. Once Edgar sends this out once, he'll go ahead and expire it. So this is a really great option to use if you're scheduling in all of your holiday content. You can go ahead and add this content, mark it as use once from the schedule drop down menu right here. Before saving it, you're going to click on schedule, send and save. This will pop up a dialog box where you can actually put in a specific date and time when you want this content to send out. If this is populated here, Edgar will actually hold this piece of content until this day and time is reached. Once this day and time is reached, he'll send it out to whatever accounts you have attached over here on the left. If use once is checked off, Edgar will then go ahead and expire it. If use once is not checked off, Edgar will go ahead and then put this post to the end of the line in the category it's been assigned to. And if that post is on your schedule, if that category is on your schedule, it'll go back into the last in first out rotation. If that category is not on your schedule, it'll just sit in the library and you can always reuse it and put a new schedule send and save date on it if you wanted to. So those are the two ways of scheduling content. You can absolutely only manually schedule your content if you want. These will appear in your queue as well at the date and time you put in here. Um, or you can only use the evergreen schedule or you can use a combination of both. Just remember they're two separate options. They don't like talk to each other. So one doesn't replace the other. They're just two different ways that Edgar allows you to have that flexibility to get the right mix of content going out. Last thing here on the composer is this variations button. So this is what I was talking about. If you have a thought leadership concept or if you have something you would like to share multiple times, but just want to change it up a little bit, variations are a great option. This was actually a status update that, or excuse me, a feature that we built to allow you to reshare status updates on Twitter, um, but it can be used with any of the networks at all. So the reason we built it for Twitter is because they do have a term of service that says you cannot send the same tweet to the same Twitter account more than once anymore. So if you're using the evergreen schedule for Twitter, you'll notice when a tweet sends out, we go ahead and expire it for you to keep you in compliance with that term of service. If you'd like to reshare something like a blog post or anything on the social media, you'll go ahead and write your status update, click to add a variation, then just reword it a little bit. So if this is a blog post, what could you do? You could use a pull quote from it. You could use a different headline from it. You could go ahead and change out the story you're telling or the question you're asking your followers. You get the point change the language a little, you can still reshare that same concept or that same blog. How these are working then with the time slots on your schedule is Edgar, when this whole post is up in the rotation, will choose the last variation you added and send it out. He's then going to take this whole post and put it to the end of the line in the category. The next time this whole content item comes up, he'll send variation number one. So he's working backwards. Variations will not be sent out back to back unless that's the only post in that category. All right, so that's kind of the general overview of adding content to your library and scheduling it either with an evergreen scheduler or the manually schedule content. Now, there are a lot of other features and a lot of other flexibility that Meet Edgar offers. Um, and if you didn't get a question answered, I'm going to pop into the questions now. But if you didn't get a question answered and you're still super confused about how to set Meet Edgar up, remember, we do run office hours. We do try uh, we do try to offer them daily. So right here, if you ever would like, um, let me grab that, to come and just ask questions. Office hours is completely unstructured, so I won't come in with slides and stuff like that. Um, but it's a great place just to come in and ask any setup questions. If you get confused at any time, you can come to as many as those as you want. 
The second resource before I jump into questions I want to give you is our onboarding playlist on YouTube. So if you're new to Edgar and you're confused about how to set something up, these couple videos on that playlist here will really speak through um, getting to know what features are in Edgar and go through those like two minute videos there. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump into the questions. Leslie, why is content posting backwards? So the reason we do it in a last in first out order is because we want to make sure when you're batching your content every month that Edgar is always favoring the new content you're putting into the categories before he repeats any of the older content. So last in first out rotation means as you start to add more content into each of the categories, Edgar will always favor the new content to post and put it to the end of the line. As he starts to work his way through all the content, repeating content on social media is a really good strategy to take just because so few people see any of the status updates that go out there. So last in first out just allows you to make sure you know you're repeating your content. But if you're ever adding new content into the categories, we always want to make sure we're favoring that new content first. So if you have stuff that needs to go out in a certain order, I suggest you either manually schedule the content or you load it into that category in the reverse order that you want it posted. If you're still confused about the two different ways of scheduling, this help article right here um, will go, oops, that's the office hours one. That's the office hours one. If you're still confused about that, this help article right here will go over the two different ways of scheduling content there. Um, so go ahead and look over that as well. Uh, so the best way to change the content order, Stephanie, is to either use the manually scheduled content date and time. So when we looked at that schedule, send and save feature there, if you go ahead and put a specific date and time when you want the content to go out, Edgar will always hold that post until that date and time and send it out. So that's one way. The other way would be going to the queue and clicking that fast forward button on the posts in the queue. If you click that fast forward button, it'll send the post to the end of the line in the category and pull in the next post in line. Um, I'll take a breath. Thank you, Jessica. I know I do talk fast. Um, yeah, let me know what other questions. I think Tia went ahead and marked some. So I will go ahead and take a peek here. Um, sorry for the super specific question. We like specificity, no problem. But what I was hoping someone might be able to help. I didn't set up my categories properly from the beginning. I have several seasonal posts mixed in and I don't want to automate posts because it might pull from these out of date. How can I quickly clear out my queue so I can start from scratch? So the best way to clear out your queue would be to remove the time slots from your schedule. So if you go into your schedule tab, Sarah, and you click into a time slot, there's a delete button. If you just remove all of those but, uh, all of those time slots from your schedule, um, that'll go ahead and remove all of the content. The content will still be in the library. So you can either then go back in and schedule the content with the manually scheduled feature, or you can go ahead and put those categories back onto your schedule. Um, but yeah, if you remove the time slots from the schedule, the content will be removed from the queue, but it'll still be in the library. So then you can reschedule it that way. Sarah also makes a really good point here in that if you would like to create seasonal categories or like categories to do campaigns, remember when you're in your schedule here, if you've made a category and you've loaded content into it, but you don't place that category onto your schedule, Edgar's not going to send that content out. That content will just remain in the library. Then once that season rolls around, so if you make a category and call it like winter time, you can just pop that category onto your schedule when you want. Once that season is over, you can come to your schedule here. You can sort it by the category you want to remove, click into that area, click delete and make sure that category is nowhere on your schedule. Those posts will then remain in the library until the next time that this rolls, uh, that that season rolls around and Edgar will start to reuse those posts again if you put that category back on your schedule. So there's a lot of flexibility and creativity there. Uh, but yeah, if you remove the categories from time slots from your schedule, your queue will clear out um, unless you've manually scheduled the content. If you've manually scheduled content in the queue here, this fast forward button will actually look like an X and you can just click on that X, which will remove the piece of content from the queue. 
Um, all right, John, variations is content creating related. I'm talking about how to change the order of the posts in the queue. Um, yeah, so again, changing the order of the posts is just gonna be either clicking this fast forward button right here. If I click the fast forward button, it's putting that post to the end of the line in the category and pulling in the next post. Or again, when you um, have the option to manually schedule content here, this will be your best way for the schedule drop down to click that schedule send and save option and put in a specific date and time. Otherwise, remember this evergreen schedule should really be used for that content that doesn't need to send out on a specific date and time. That's always going to be relevant for your followers to get to know you, to get to know your brand, to get to know who you are. Um, so popping these on here shouldn't really matter when that content is going out. If you're doing these categories in an evergreen way, the content you need to go out on a specific date and time should be scheduled with that manually schedule send and save content. Um, should I try avoiding featuring competitors content? Yeah, I mean, if they're, if you're featuring a direct competitor, that's not always going to be the best thing to do. So it's not like we would uh, necessarily feature content from like Hootsuite or Buffer or other scheduling tools. But again, we would schedule like curated content from like Social Media Examiner, or there's a lot of business coaches out there like Jenna Kutcher, Amy Porterfield, who talk a lot about really effective marketing strategies, yet they're not in direct competition with selling something like me, Edgar. Um, you know, it could be cool to talk about your competition in ways that you differ just to help remind people um, to find the right tool for them. Because we're not trying to trick people, right? We're not trying to trick people into buying our product or service. That's not great marketing. That's not a great feeling to do. What we're trying to do is help people decide if we're the right product or service. So you don't have to be afraid about talking about your competitor necessarily if you're presenting it in a way about like how you differ. So like how we differ from Hootsuite and Buffer is the category-based evergreen schedule that we offer. You know, and things like Hootsuite or Buffer, once a status update sends out one time, that's it. It doesn't go ahead and rotate through, which isn't an effective use of your time, in our opinion, for using social media. So we can talk about stuff like that. Um, but when you're looking for that curated content in your industry, I would really look for people who aren't in direct competition, but still talk about the things that are going on in your industry. Um, what were the six categories? So categories should totally be customized to kind of your pillar content and what you want to put out online. Um, so things I always like to suggest is like the content that you're, um, putting out should be related to telling your origin story. So that about me content, so people can get to know the person, the human behind the brand, um, tell people your why. So you could have a category called like my why. This kind of goes back to that Simon Sinek quote that says people will buy why you sell something more than they will buy what you sell. So make sure that you're telling people the values your company has, why you built it. Those kind of posts are really good for, again, differentiating why people should buy from you versus one of your competitors as well. Tell people your benefits. Behind the scenes content works really well because people always want that curtain pulled back to see what's going on in someone else's life. That's why like gossip blogs and People Magazine and stuff like that do so well because as humans, we love to get to know that behind the scenes content. So go ahead and create categories to show your followers that if you follow me on social media, you're gonna get this behind the scenes content more than if you don't follow me. People love that kind of curiosity filling gap. Testimonials, so things like um, social proof stuff, that could be a great category. Uh, thought leader quotes, either from you or from others in your industry, that's kind of a must have to present yourself as an expert. Blogs or other content, you always wanna think about social media as being the place that your content is getting engaged with. That's driving it to a space online that you own. Do you own a blog? Do you own some video content? Do you own a podcast? How can social media be used to drive the content there? And then you always want to make sure you have a promotions category, whether that's offering discounts, whether that's offering people a place to um, go to your landing pages that are going to tell people about the price, stuff like that. Uh, but if these categories don't make sense to you, absolutely customize them just to help make sure that you have a good structure there. But these are a good place to start if you're not sure. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. If you want a category or type of content to post every few weeks, what is the best way to use Meet Edgar to do that? 
Do you want a category type of content to post every few weeks? Okay, so there's no way that you can be like, post this category every two weeks. If a category is on your schedule, it's gonna post every single week. The way you can do what you're asking to do here, Stephanie, is either use the manually schedule send and save to send that content out, or provide the proper ratio of posts in a category versus that category on your schedule. So if you wanna, let's say, rotate through posts like once a month, you could create a category and you could add five status updates to that category. You could place that category on your Meet Edgar schedule once. If that category is on your Meet Edgar schedule once and there's five status updates on it, things are going to repeat every five weeks so each post in that category will repeat about monthly. So if you really wanna make sure that you're repeating something monthly, it's good to do it in a category that has five posts and then those five posts will repeat monthly, which you should have about five posts that are really appropriate to repeat monthly anyway. So I would suggest kind of thinking about the ratio if you just wanna have that set it and forget it. Otherwise use the manual schedule send and save to get the proper date and time for when you wanna to post to go out. Uh, Yolanda, I'd love to hear suggestions on how to differentiate repurpose posts between different platforms. Okay, so if you have content that you want to really make sure you have different status updates for for each platform, you do have to add it to Edgar multiple times. We are going to work on a feature to help make sure you're adding one status update that can be tweaked for each platform. Not going to be released super soon. Our next feature we're working on that we're very excited about is direct posting to Instagram. Um, so that'll be released, but after that, we'll start looking on more tailored posts. But for now, if you'd like to differentiate content between these different platforms, um, you would uh, you have two options. You can either create categories per platform. So you can say something like Instagram blogs, Twitter blogs, Facebook blogs as three different categories. When you're adding your content to Edgar, always check off the appropriate account connection for that category and you'll know when things are going out and you can customize it that way. Or if you create a category called blog posts and you click to add your content to that category, go ahead and check off Facebook the first time and save it to your blog post category. Click to add content again, check off Twitter, write your Twitter status update and save it to your blog post category. Click to add content again, um, go ahead and click it for Instagram, add the photo, add your caption and save it to the blog post category. Now, if you put that blog post category onto your schedule connected to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and Edgar comes upon that time slot on your schedule, he's going to that category in the library and looking for the most recent status update that has permission to go to all three of those accounts. So if the most recent status update only has permission to go to Twitter, he'll send that one there but he knows his time slot still has permission to go to Facebook and Instagram. So he's gonna keep searching until he finds one that has permission to go to Facebook and one that has permission to go to Instagram. So if you've added them back to back, Edgar will send all three out there. So it's totally up to you whether you wanna use different categories or whether you wanna use the same category, but that's kind of why you're setting the permissions when you're adding posts to the content in the library and when you're putting those time slots onto your schedule. Um, all right. What are the best practices for status updates for Instagram feeds and stories? Are you adding reels to the mix anytime soon? Okay. So feed and story, how I like to think about it is feed content should be going out. That's a little more curated, a little more business oriented and story content is awesome for that behind the scenes content. If you're using Edgar currently to schedule stories content, um, we've got this blog post that I'll pop into the chat that'll go ahead and tell you how to use our push notification system in order to do that. Um, we can't automate reels currently because Instagram's API doesn't allow anyone to do that. Um, as I mentioned, we are working on a direct posting to Instagram feature that should be released um, as our next feature release, which will be exciting. Um, but for now, if you're using the push notification system, you can absolutely still get your story content out there. Um, and I would recommend, you know, story content is great for like showing people what you're working on, your day to day stuff, introducing your origin story on why you started your business, um, stuff like that. Uh, and this in the chat here, do, 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 there you go, is going to um is going to go ahead and go over how you schedule instagram stories with me edgar um doo -doo -doo -doo. 
do you have recommendations for the number of times a day to post? So I have some great ideas for categories, but I also don't want to overdo it. So of course it's possible to overdo it, but I wouldn't think super hard about that. You know, the algorithms on these social networks don't want to annoy people using the social network either. You have to remember that. So they're not going to show every status update you put out there to someone every time you put it out there, unless that someone likes every status update. When you are liking something on Facebook or on any platform, really, it's a signal to the algorithm saying, hey, I want to see more content like this. So if you want to see more content like this, the algorithm is going to say, okay, they like this, show the next post. They like this, show the next post. So your followers are voting that they want to see more content from you every time they like one of your posts to the algorithm. If they never like your post, the algorithm is going to show them less posts from you. So that's one of the reasons that you really should be comfortable putting status updates out there um, and not feeling like you'll be annoying your followers. The algorithm's got your back there. Now, there is no one right answer for how many times to post on social media. Each platform is a little bit different. You know, for something like Twitter, which is a lot faster moving and the algorithm takes in recency a lot more, I would suggest posting multiple times a day there. You know, here at Edgar, we'll post some like, like five to seven times on Twitter versus just one time on Instagram. So it is a little network specific, just for the nature of how they work. But I would just start to experiment and really start to notice like what um, categories people are liking content from, adding more of that. Your followers will let you know what they like for sure. Um, Violet, what do you recommend? Uh, do you recommend videos and carousels to have separate categories? And is there an option to clone? So there's not an option to clone, but I know that's been spoken about before. And I do love that idea. Um, if you guys do ever have feedback that you want to see from features in Edgar, we've got this really great feedback feedback board here. Um, and this is just a cool crowdsourcing thing because we love just to make sure we're building the features that are most useful for the most people. Um, so that right there, I'll go ahead and bring you to our feature request board. So if you ever do have stuff like that, um, go ahead and let us know there. It's super helpful to get those voted on. Um, but yeah, if you want to make sure that you're sending out like one video a week, having a video specific category can be an incredibly useful thing to put out there. Um, but I would say, you know, don't overthink it too much for anything on social media. Sending out something daily is really great. Keeping it simple, keeping your brand aware like that. If you have the time to create more categories and to put out something two times a day on Facebook, even better. Every status update you're putting out there is an opportunity to pe for people to see your brand, get that brand awareness. Um, and, you know, not every single one of your sales is going to come from social media. It's just a channel to really help collect emails, raise that brand awareness, stuff like that. So I'd say don't overcomplicate it if you're um, kind of getting worried about should I have a category for videos or photos or have them all in one. It seems like you're doing a really great job if you already have content that's video related and photo related. So I would say whatever is simplest that you are going to stick to. That's truly the best advice we can offer. What's something you're going to stick to? Do that because that consistency is the most important thing on social media. All right, let me see if I missed any more. Um, guys, remember we do office hours, so come to that if you have product-related questions. We do content batching parties monthly. I'd love to know any feedback of things you guys wanna learn in the future. Uh, we also do monthly guest webinars, so keep an eye on your email for those as well, and we'll send those topics out. Um, but if you guys do have more feedback on what you want to learn in the future, how you want these structures, uh, how, uh, how you want these sessions to be structured, go ahead and let us know. I will be in the inbox the rest of the afternoon. So it's support at meetegger.com where you can reach us there. Um, but yeah, stay in touch for sure. Um, it looks like uh, Allegra will... The next direct post to Instagram also. So I'm not sure about comments, but I'll definitely bring that up as a feature suggestion that you have there for sure. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Awesome. Oh, thank you, Bree. That's really nice to hear. Um, I'm grateful for this. Oh, good. Struggling to produce content. So just really staying um, on ways that you can get social media, more social media status updates out of one piece of content might be helpful for that problem. 
Um, I'll drop one more handout in here. That's good um, for how to take like one blog post and make sure you're getting those variations for like 20 different status updates out of it. So if you're struggling to create content, remember this isn't cheating. This is a strategy that some of the most prolific content creators online actually use is upcycling one piece of content, sending it out with multiple status updates multiple times. Um, so don't be afraid to do things like that. And that's truly why our tool exists is because we want to give you the ability to know that this is a great strategy to take. And if you've never tried it before, it's a really cool way of seeing, oh my gosh, like I'm driving traffic still. I'm still getting likes on this post, even though I shared it a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of a cool thing to see, to remind yourself if you're creating quality content, posting it multiple times is never going to be a bad thing. Um, uh, so you cannot bring your Instagram feed into Edgar at this time. Um, you would have to like copy and paste the uh, status updates and then like screenshot the photo or if you have the photo, upload it as an image post to Edgar. But that's another great feature suggestion. Um, oh, thank you, Yolanda. I'm sorry about talking so fast. I'll definitely work on that. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, let us know, guys, what um, else that you have feedback on support at me .com, and please come to an office hour session or a future content batching party it is one of my favorite things to be able to hang out with you um and otherwise let us know if you're not an edgar user yet your first seven days are free if you sign up with me edgar.com thanks so much for coming today guys and i hope that you got some great ideas to spark your content batching for this month